made in 1985 by Agnes Varda, who won the top prize at the Venice Film Festival, follows the lead character Mona on a lost journey. She is a defiant, angry, difficult young woman who is doomed. The film is interested in how its characters' opinions are shaped by the inescapable power structures in society, which assert that women should not be living on the road. Since the movie opens with her lying dead, frozen in a ditch somewhere, we know from the first moment that we're watching a tragedy. Varga decided to shoot this narrative film almost as a documentary. She herself provides voiceover in the beginning to set the circumstances in the movie in a typical documentary style. Personne ne réclamant le corps, il passa du fossé à la fosse commune. Cette morte de mort naturelle ne laissait pas de traces. Je me demande qui pensait encore à elle parmi ceux qui l'avaient connue petite. Many of the people who met Mona on her destructive path to death comment along the way. C'est pas banal de voir une fille camper en hiver. Les temps ont changé. This cast, most of whom are non-professionals, who Varda found in the various locations, deliver their impressions of Mona and their experiences with her. Faut que tu partes, mon copain veut pas que tu restes. Qui, celui de la photo Tiens, prends ton balle et casse-toi. Oh, c'est un balle pour me tirer. C'est dommage, la vieille m'avait à la bonne, mais la bonne veut pas. She's an enigmatic young woman who has chosen a difficult life as a drifter and seems obsessed with freedom. Each person who addresses the camera directly has a different impression of her. She is not particularly likable or physically attractive, but her face holds the screen completely. You are glued to her. You are fascinated by her odd behavior. What is driving this troubled young woman? Varda gives no answers. The emphasis and intent of Vagabond are focused on the fact that people pass through our lives and, for a moment, we are experiencing and sharing an interlude of our lives. But that is fleeting and often only cursory. The entire focus of Vagabond becomes one word to the viewer. Why? Why would a young woman take to the road, live destructively, ignore offered help, or worse, abuse it? Of course, there are no simple answers, nor any real answers to this one-word question, and Varda plants her camera squarely in front of us and says, look, watch, this happens every day. I saw Vagabond in a theater in New York in 1986. Mona, the main character of the film, has been with me ever since that moment. I have met other people who have seen this film and reacted in a similar way. Sandrine Bonaire, who won the Best Actress César from the French Film Society for her performance, perfectly captures anger, hurt, rejection of life. It also shows us the brutality of life realistically gone wrong and the adventure and call of life on the road. There are not a lot of laughs or scenes of relief, but Varda chooses to do this. The sparse and poetic film is a tragedy from the opening shot. It is not her intention to present anything other than the gruesome reality of a young woman who has decided to leave her life behind and live on the edge tough and belligerent, with stringy hair and dirty fingernails. She is, as the French title reveals, sans toi ni loi, without roof or law. The really unusual concept in this film is that Mona is not always likable, nor cinematic, but her face, extraordinary and mysterious, it is riveting. She is very real. Varda based the story on a real young woman she ran into on the road while doing research for the film. She was more interesting than the men I had met. A woman on the road is also sexual prey. She's not understood. People wonder if she's on the road because she hasn't found a man. Not only homeless and foodless, but manless. Although Varda insisted that the film was not inspired by one woman, the drifter she encountered contributed a great deal to the film's authenticity. She stayed with the director and crew for six weeks and was paid to coach Bonaire. She plays a small part at the end. You see her in the train station toward the end of the film, and then she disappeared again. I already had the winter, filth, a wanderer, and dying from the cold. It became more precisely a young woman, one who doesn't want to relate, to be helped, 
or say thank you. She has nothing to do with hippie flower children. She's part of a new breed of homeless young women. This is someone fed up with everything who says, leave me alone, and is finally left alone. Her refusal amazes me, disturbs me, puzzles me. So says Agnes Varda. Mona's story grabs us through the Sandrine Bonaire performance. After all these years, the film is still dear to me, still raw. I still see her face. She is to me, and I suspect many others, the face of the homeless, the angry, the lost, people who made foolish choices and paid with their lives. Varda, who is without a doubt one of the most empathetic and tender storytellers, focuses her lens directly on a life that is spiraling downward. Et raconter une fille jeune qui fait la route. Et je crois que Mona est vraiment d'aujourd'hui. Je vais vous dire parce que je crois que il y a toujours eu des vagabonds hein, depuis le Moyen Âge, des gens sur les routes tout seuls. Mais il n'y a pas très longtemps qu'il y a des femmes sur les routes toutes seules. C'est un phénomène relativement récent. Mona is more or less out of control. We know she's out of control. And we know we and all the others who run into her are powerless to stop any of it. But one person follows closely and understands, the director of photography, Patrick Blossier, who shot this. It's his first film, and he shot it in the cold months of the year, all in Erol, an area of wine production in the south of France. The muted colors, angles, the stark beauty deserve accolades. And he got them. And he gets us with the severity of the situation. Camera shows us. The camera tells us. The main sequence in which she is caught up in the madness of a wine celebration by peasants is frightening and bewildering. It presages what is to come. Why watch this tragedy? Because it is part of the experience of life lived and shared with others. We are often powerless to do anything to help, as are all the people that we see in this film. Powerlessness is something thinking people must grasp and come to terms with. We are often powerless to do anything to help, as are all the people we see in the film. At the end, Mona seems bewildered, frightened, almost amazed at how low she has fallen. Finally, she cries, and we remember how young and defenseless she is under her tough facade. She is an abandoned animal, muddy and unkempt, disoriented, at the bottom, no longer able to keep up appearances. We sense the end is near. We are left with the echo of fear that such a fall from life could and does happen every day. Of course, we try not to look. We try not to see it. 